Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Alec and today I'm going to be teaching you how I edit my landscape photos all the way from when I import the raw file to how I post it in social media. Now some things to note is I always shoot in raw because it gives me more flexibility over the image and I shoot with an Nikon D850 thanks to its huge megapixel sensor which allows me to print the images. I will also be showing how I watermark my photos in Lightroom and where I got my perfect watermark design so you can get also yours. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be editing this image right here, which is clearly underexposed and a lot of work to be done. That's why I chose this image specifically. Uh, the first thing I would do is just enable profile corrections, just because it messes a little bit with our exposure. So once we uh, increment the exposure, we don't want to again increment it by enabling profile corrections afterwards. So that's why we do it first. And we choose remove chromatic aberration. And the first thing to do is just correct our exposure. So let's bump up the exposure. I think that's about fine. And remove some of the highlights. Uh, what we want to do is just boost a lot of the shadows. So that will make it a lot better. Again, increment a little bit the exposure and increment some contrast, just so it doesn't look flat. As you can see, it's clearly on the blue side, so let's just go a little bit to the warm side. We, For this image, we want to leave it on the blue side, but um, it's very blue in my opinion, so we just want to go a little bit warmer. And the whites, we can probably uh, decrease them a little bit, and the blacks increase them, and then increase some clarity. Maybe about 24 is fine, and some vibrance. That's fine. And yeah, there's some saturation as well. So yeah, that's looking a lot better. Um, there's still a lot of work. So let's just boost a little bit more of the exposure. And um, what I would do is just go to the blue color and then manipulate it uh, separately. So what I would do is just decrease some of the blues. And I think there's some green. Let's see if this one targets the green. So yeah, there we go. It's making a little bit uh, wider, which is how it's supposed to be. But um, it's also decreasing a lot of the trees. So we don't want to mess with that. What we want to do instead is go to our brush selection tool and drag our exposure a little bit up and the saturation a little bit down and then make sure that the brush has a little bit a little bit of feathering and then start painting you want when you're using this technique you want to almost paint on the on the subject itself for this example it's the arc so we want to paint this and we can zoom in it a little bit and if you're not sure what you're painting you just click show select mask overlay and that shows what you're painting make sure auto mask is on what that does is uh, it uh, selects the edges a little bit better so it won't go to the skies in this example Now we can uh, uncheck this and see how it's doing. So maybe we can increase a little bit more exposure and maybe some clarity. What about some contrast? Let's see how it was before. It was before like this and after like this. As you can see, it's greenish, it's underexposed. Now we can expose it correctly. Now what I would do is next is add a gradient filter to expose some of that ground. think it's too exposed so let's just go back a little bit and make sure that the saturation remains the same a little bit less is fine there we go 
So one thing I like to do when landscape images is just crop it a little bit. So it won't, it's more like a landscape panoramic image like this. That looks a lot better. And um, the highlights and the split toning is a great tool that allows you to boost up some color in the highlights. So what you want to do first is just uh, select the color that you like in the highlights. Maybe uh, magenta is fine. Maybe not too much. Yeah, that's about it. And then in the shadows, maybe some blue, but not too much as well. Or you can even play around with the um, with the values. So maybe orange or some green. I don't think green looks good. Maybe I'm gonna go for some blue. I like the blue one. Okay, and you always, well, if it's not leveled, you just wanna click on level, that will do it automatically. It corrected it a little bit. And uh, maybe add some vignetting, so the post crop vignetting, so it would be more dramatic. Now, uh, as you can see, there's clearly a lot of stuff that we want to remove. There's some trash in the ground and uh, we want to remove it. For that, I would turn into Photoshop. So you just go edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. And so in this case, what we want to do is just click on the clone SAM tool and select a point to clone, and then just keep cloning until all the trash is gone. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So yeah, that's how you remove all the imperfections in the image. Once that's done, you just click Command S and it will, it will save it. And then uh, once in Lightroom, you can see all the images are changed. So this was the before and this is the after. Now, as you can see in this image, I shot it at ISO 500. So what you wanna do is some noise reduction. So I would generally go about 30 in this case. And that will see it's a lot better still a little bit uh, low, but uh, I don't want to um, remove a little bit of detail. So you can just bump up the detail just so it will remain constant. And if you look at the before and after, this was the after, and this is the before. It's not too much of a difference, but it works. So maybe uh, reduce a little bit sharpening that will make it better. So yeah, um, what else? Um, maybe you want some more color in the trees, so you can just go to the green uh, color and then saturate it a little bit more. And uh, I, w I wouldn't mess around with the tone curve, let's just see how it goes, but, oh yeah, well that, that looks a little bit better. Not too much because It'll look a lot, a lot uh, photoshopped, or maybe you don't want that in your image. And yeah, there was it makes it pop. So yeah, it doesn't hurt to play around with sliders. Um, you don't know what what it will do. You can just revert it back later if you don't like it. So as you can see, um, we started with an image that looked like this, and if we reset all the sliders, uh, it looks clearly under underexposed. And uh, once we corrected the exposure, it looked at like this, but we're still having some trash. That's why we brought it to Photoshop, removed the trash, made it pop with the tone curve. And yeah, that's the final product. Now for, uh, for exporting, I would al always export with a watermark. So I have my preset right now, but you can clearly clear, uh, create a new one. So um, what you would do is just choose your image, uh, position it how you like it. I liked it on the on the right bottom side and just decrease the size if you want to and yeah that's how you create a preset and you can just save current settings as new preset but I won't do that since I already have mine. For the watermark I use a company called Photo Logo so they will create your own watermark based on your name and you can include a sub expression like photography or something like that you can just order your logo now. No, this video is not sponsored. This is just a service that I really like and you can uh, 
select each attribute that you want in your uh, in your logo. So for example, if you want it a little bit thinner, maybe a little bit curvier, professional, of course, and some maybe not so readable and maybe more classic. And you are a pro photographer, maybe semi-pro, and you go to step two. You can also animate your logo. You can, um, they can include a Adobe Illustrator file for like 20 bucks. So you can mess with uh, stuff that you didn't like. You have like two or three revisions. And yeah, this is a service that I really like. And this is how I got my logo in my images. So you can also see how raw files are easily uh, more, you can manipulate them more and play around with more of the sliders in post. Whereas JPEGs, uh, if, we're, if we were to edit a JPEG image, we couldn't have corrected the exposure the way we did. So yeah, that's how I edit my photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. So that's about it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. And also ring that bell so you won't miss any future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.